Space 101.1 FM brings you Broken Alaska, the world's only improvised radio drama series. The brilliant northern sun hangs high over Main Street, where George and Sheriff Jim are trying to place the fancy clock that George, still spreading around his newfound wealth, has purchased for the town. Jim, you crownless peasant, listen. When you lift, don't shake it. I'm sorry, George. I understand this is an expensive timepiece. I'm glad somebody appreciates my gold. I'm going to lift with my knees. What, what are we doing here? Jim, you are supposed to be fixing the bugle in front of Town Hall. It's been broken for three weeks. The, the golden rule, the man with the gold rules. I, I got sidetracked. Just because he looks like a king doesn't mean he runs the town. I run this town when the mayor isn't here, and you take orders from me, not we from We collaborate, money. for gosh sakes. Heather, I've been busy. Busy? You work for this town of Broken. You don't know the half of what I do for this town. I'd like to know all of what you do because I am in charge of what you do and it is not getting done. Heather, with all due respect, I work for the county of Broken, not the city of Broken. The city of Broken is the only city in the county of Broken, so you work for me. Okay, technicality, technicality, and actually I work for the mayor, though we never see the mayor. Look, my relationship with the mayor is no one's business, Sheriff Jim, and as head of the the town council of broken i command you to fix my bugle are you going to solve this problem today yes i am fix oh oh look at that cute little bunny just scurried right across uh, i'm sorry did you say bunny yeah oh it's so cute Bun- oh george it's it's so fuzzy and poofy and beautiful don't ever put those words with bunnies they are not cute they're very dangerous to have in a town I wouldn't worry about that. There's just one lonely little rabbit. Heather, how many bunnies have you seen today? Today? That's are just... they all this color or are they other colors? I've seen this bunny one time okay. and it's brown. It's... Okay, so how many bunnies have you seen total in the last 30 days if they had to be individualized? Oh my, Wild five guess. or six? Five or six. George, what about you? To be honest, uh, I see them all the time out behind my house. Oh my God. Why am I just hearing about this? Who doesn't like bunnies, Sheriff Jim? Bunnies are very dangerous, Heather. Rabbits. We're in a tactical situation. They're so cute and fluffy. I need to go investigate these rabbits. I have, let's just say, I have some experience with rabbits over my career, and it's never turned out good. Oh, look, a bunny. Oh, for God's sakes. You're listening to Broken Alaska, radio's only ongoing improvised drama series. Check us out on Facebook at Broken AK and download past episodes for free from iTunes or your favorite podcaster. Lately, Brick has become more and more frustrated with Louise's filing system and her attitude. Let's check in at Brick's office right now. Brick, stop it right now. You are ruining everything with your rifling, with your dirty hands and on my drawers. Well, look, I have to find the permit. But what time is Joey coming in? Brick, Joey is visiting their grandma. You knew that. I, I, don't, I do not remember that. Oh, there is many things wrong with your memory, Brick. Maybe something has gone uh, wrong with your mental capacity, eh? But to right. be honest, I never thought your mental capacity was very high anyway, so no, not surprising at all. Thank you very much. And just, uh, look, just remember who oh, pays you, all right? Well, technically, because uh, I am in charge of the accounts and I write all the checks here, I pay myself. Oh, great. Like, what are you doing? I'm looking for a permit, so you would look under P for permit. Obviously, you do not know my alphabetization. Alphabetization. The other day, you were looking for some pencils. You were looking in the P section of the supply closet. No, no, no. It goes under C for crayon. Where would you put stapler? Under S. So you pull out the drawer with the S's and there's no stapler there. No, because our stapler is gold. So it is under O for or. Or. Oui. What is that, like a character out of The Hobbit? It is French for gold, you stupid nit poop. Did you not go to school, Brick? I went to school. I actually took French. French is the language of romance, and you are bad at romance, so there is no way you ever learned it. Je t'aimerais à protéger mon amour. No. What was that garbage? That was perfect French. (laughs) C'est pas possible, eh? It means, I will love you forever, my darling. You say it. Je t'aimerais pour toujours, ma petite. 
Well, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> no. This town is driving me insane. It's gonna... No, you know, you say you need to leave town. Why don't you just uh, take off a little? I am more than capable to uh, do this all. You know, and I won't have you rifling through my drawers anymore. I'm not rifling. Yes, you are. It's my office. You might own it uh, for now, but... Uh, what does it even mean to own anything anyway? Oh, good. I've got a philosopher on stuff too. Can you tell me um, something about this, all right? Why is there a file called Rose in this cabinet? If I open that up, what am I going to find in there? There's no reason you need to know about that. Well, I know, tell you what, if I'm going to rifle, that's one I'll rifle. You've been rifling Rose's draws enough, Brick. Oh, I wish. <laughs> When I left this office, the permit was there. Prick, your face is getting bright red. Have you ever tried uh, yoga? Meditation? Uh... I am a great student of character. Oh. You have got something up your sleeve. And I can read you. So what well, you have you read. got that lets you talk to me in that fashion? Hmm? Prick, I don't know what you're talking about. I was just trying to explain the way that I organize the tours. And... Uh, I am French. We are just a little bit better than everyone else. Hmm. This is hopeless. So th- this is not my office anymore, really, is it? No. Why am I even here? I don't know. Why am I in this town? Who knows? Leave. Get out. Now. While you still can. Ugh. Speaking of Rose, I see her and her rosy face walking in now. No, I'm not here. Hi, guys. Hey, good morning, Brick. How's it going? Hey. Oh, hi, Louise. Uh, hi, Rose. How are you feeling today, Brick? I see your ankle looks all healed there. You're walking about quite nicely. Yeah, I can take the pain now. Oh, yeah. do you need any more of the placebo? Uh, I mean, Obercalp pills funny, today? Funny, <laughs> you, you don't know the pain I went through. You don't know the pain I went through having to take care of you for three days. Oh, yeah, and by house. the way, that black pair of underwear I asked you to wash, I, I can't find them anywhere. Do you know where they went? You I said they checked. were silk. You told me I had to hand wash them, so I hung them in the bathroom on that line that you have in the shower. Did which, you look in the which shower? Bathroom? It's on the second bathrooms. floor. It's like the east wing. Look, I don't know. Find your own underwear. That's not the point, no. actually, Brick. I just wanted to check in on you and see how you're doing today. You, you just wanted to check in, Ross? Is that your secret? How you get all the men? You push them away, push them away, and then you just reel them back in and then push them away. I oh, am not you reeling you men killer. No. Don't you have some office work you need to do, Louise? Maybe some filing or something you could be taking care of right now? No. The filing is in perfect condition. Everything is under control, Rose. Are, are there some accounts you could pay or, or something you could do in another room, perhaps? Mm, no, there is not. I'm all done. <sighs> Look, just stay. I don't even care. That's fine. I will. Brick, I actually came to tell you something. I know that you tend to enjoy sitting across my street in that recliner and watching my house, so I thought you should know I'm going to be gone for a couple of days, so you might as well not sit there. Thank goodness, eh? Thank you, Louise. They didn't find the dagger. Oh. Or his body. You know, that's part of the reason that I'm going to Austinville, okay? Last spring, with all the dagger business, I felt like everyone was kind of in my business. And I, well, frankly, when I got kidnapped, I felt a little weak. Distraught? Weak. Panicky? Yes, Louise. That is because you are. No, Louise, it's not because I'm weak. It's because I was kidnapped by a mass murderer, Mm. super criminal. You are kidnapped because you are weak. No, actually, Louise, you are a soft, just like all the produce ladies. Okay, thank you, Louise, again for your input. You sure there's not a file you could be in? No, I am quite enjoying uh, right here. Anyway, that is why I'm going to go to Austinville for a Well, you don't have to ask my permission, I am not asking your permission. Well, it seems to me that's what you're doing. 100% not asking asking your permission. I am just telling you because I know you will sit across the street and if I don't come back for three days, you're going to get freaked out about it and launch a new manhunt looking for me. You know what? I don't freak out. I have a a deep, heartfelt emotion when it comes to your missing. In fact, I I was working on a few lines. Poetry again? You were working on some poems? It is uh, no wonder he don't have a woman. Yeah, it was an idea that came to me. It was like, I don't miss you when you're gone. Because you're always gone. I miss you when you're not with me, even though you aren't. It's kind of prose, prosy sort of thing. That, 
That was really interesting. I guess. Don't do that again. Well, I had another one, but it was it's a little bit more personal. Oh, yeah. No, let's see that one Maybe later. One day. Maybe after. we could do just one again. It's a called day. The Taste of You. Uh, even Rose should not have to endure that. But I, I'll, I'll leave it. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Great. Good. I don't think I could stomach that today. Thank you. Are you going to take your, um, your cell phone with you? I take my cell phone with me, yes. What is the reason then? What are you doing? It's a taxidermy class. Isn't that great? That goes oh. on you don't have to do it, Louise. I'm taking the class, okay? You are going to be handling produce and you are doing taxidermy? You can keep this it. This is disgusting. I thought there are so many hunters around Alaska and taxidermy seems like a really interesting subject. You know, it blends both the science and the detail of anatomy with the grace and the beauty and artistry of making the animal look just like it did when it was alive. Ugh. Look, I just stopped in here to let you know that I'd be gone. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Brick. Thank you, Louise, for this delightful conversation. Once again, as always, it has Mm -hmm. been absolutely intriguing to talk to you, Louise. Go have fun with your dead animals, Louise. It's going to be really cool, I think. Uh, You'll be at the uh, college? Bye. Bye. Good riddance, huh? No, it doesn't matter. I've got a tracker on a cell phone, so we'll, we'll know where she is. You're crazy. Well, I've got a tracker on yours, too, so, you know... You think you do, huh? Well, I, yeah. Back at her produce stand, Rose and Mark are joined by Sheriff Jim, whose paranoia about the bunnies is growing by the minute. Rose, can I have some of those strawberries, please? Of course. You know, I'm actually really glad to see you up at the produce stand today. I I know she's been hanging out kind of in the twisted dinghy a lot lately. Yeah, I kind of needed to see the sun. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It is. It's getting a little crisp out here, but... Oh, hey, Sheriff Jim, how's it going? Hello, Rose, Mark. Sheriff? Can I get you some fruits or veggies? Well, no, uh, Rose, I I need to talk to you. Okay, what's up? Well, you know, I don't like to base investigations on rumors, but when the rumors add up to innuendos, then I strike. Oh, okay. So a lot of people are saying you're feeding the bunnies. The bunnies? Is this true or false? Of course I'm feeding the bunnies. They're a Adorable. Look, oh, there's four over there. Goodness. Like, you, what's wrong you're, with feeding the bunnies? They're really cute. What is wrong fluffy? with you people? Um, I'm sorry, Jim. I'm I'm not really understanding. Why are you so angry about the bunnies? Because bunnies are rats that run fast. Okay, let's start there. The disease aspect is no joke. They could put influenza down the sh- main street in 30 seconds. Dear God. From A to Z. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, this is a 9-11 level security threat, you all. Have you ever talked to a rabbit? I think they're really peaceful and gentle creatures. I'm glad I'm enforcing the laws against the rabbits. Are there laws against rabbits? I don't remember any ordinance about rabbits. Sheriff Jim, I've been feeding them every day for about six months now. When I have leftover tops No wonder they have enough energy to multiply. You know what rabbits can do to society? They can undercut it. How can you think that rabbits are the cause of a fall of a society? Broken barely qualifies as a town, let alone a society. Throughout history, rabbits have brought down some of the great societies. What? The Romans, the Greeks, the Russians. I thought it was the Goths and the Visigoths. Do we want rabbits to take over our town? Not take over, of course. We've outlawed other things, like dogs. Yeah, we only just recently allowed the dogs. Children? I did not know that we had um, disallowed plastic bags. What can uh, we do, I mean, if there are too many rabbits? We want to trap them and we want to funnel them into Austinville. Isn't that obvious? It's okay if the rabbits undermine society. We just want to undermine Austinville society. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is ridiculous. And you remember the TSA story. Do I need to repeat it? I'm not sure I know that one. I was at the TSA Academy, same time Flash was at the Perina Cat Academy. Yeah. Yeah, I was running the perimeter at 2 a.m. That's what I do to clear my head. Sure. I was attacked by an army of rabbits. I don't think you revealed that part. Yes, there was three of them. Okay, first of all, an army is generally composed of a lot. I think three is true. When you're that fast, you count as three up front. Well, wait a minute. I thought you loved animals, Sheriff Jim. I mean, you have Flash. You take such good care of that cat. Yeah, you two are partners. You are Holmes and Watson. Because he loves me. Rabbits Mm. don't love me, so I don't love them. Have you tried to love the rabbits? Of course. I was a kid once. Did you have a rabbit when you were a kid, I did. His name was Dusty. Dusty? That's kind of cute. Like a little dust bunny. Well, he was kind of cute, yeah. Whatever happened to Dusty? It involved the lawnmower and my father. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Do you want me to go further on this one? No, no. Well, that's not the rabbit's fault. You two are not the majority. I'm going to call a meeting later tonight to Chernigovsk. All right, I'll, I'll be there. 
I guess I will. 7.30 sharp. Well, look over there. I mean, there's those couple of bunnies just pouncing around over there. They look so cute. Oh, for God's sake. Clear the zone. What? Clear the zone. Why? Don't shove me. What? Where's Where's my taser? My slingshot? Sheriff Jim, you I don't are, think I, you need to. Look, no. that little one's. A, let, let me just talk to It's them. the little ones that grow up to be big ones. Well, you sh- people, back up. There's nothing Sheriff, to see here. Sheriff Jim, why are you on the ground? Get hey, back, hey, hey. Please. Hey, we have a those, line. Put Line your of- taser away, Sheriff Jim. Somebody open that front door. No. D- tear gas. Martin, tear gas. not open you, the front you door. You are not tasing the bunnies. Hey, get get Sheriff out from Jim, behind my taser. legs. Move your foot before no, I, I release this. Oh, the door. Oh, 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 God's sake, Mark. Unplug it. Ow. Oh, you got tased again? Darn it. Do you need some water? No, I do not need water. I need you to stop tasing me. Okay, pull out the other prong, for God's sakes. Give me oh. back. Look, I hope that taser does not work now for at least a half an hour. Well, I, I need do to not reload it. And look, the bunnies, bunnies are gone. Good. Oh, Run hooray. away, little bunnies. Great. Okay, I, I got to go and regroup. I'll see you tonight, 7.30. Sheriff Okay, Jim, I got to go. Just close the door behind me. We'll meet tonight at the turn of gospel. We'll figure something 730. out. Okay. okay. I'll be out at 7.43. Oh, I hate oh. how late he always is. Uh, if he wants to meet at 7.43, why does he make us show up at 7.30? I think just because he can. Are you okay, Mark? Oh, no. Uh, <sighs> give it a minute. The muscles will un- Look, your muscles hair is smoking uncramp. a little bit. D- hey, did you wet yourself again? Again? Well, what Brick told me when he tased you the first time, you... You know what? Never mind. Uh, Brick would say that. It's okay. I'm going to get you some water. Thank Hold on. Thank you. The Chernogosk is Broken Alaska's multi-denominational house of worship, part church, part synagogue, and part mosque. It's also the town's meeting hall, although it's never seen a meeting quite like this one about the bunnies. Doc, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, Mark. Um, Do you smell smoke? Sorry, I got tased earlier today and my hair went up. Oh, no. Are you all right? These muscle cramps have loosened up finally. Oh, that's good. Uh, What's going on? Um, when you went to med school, how much psychology training did you get? Well, we had a short unit on Jungian psychology, but, you know, not much. How good are you with feelings? Feelings? You... Well, it's no secret to anybody. I've mainly been holed up in the dinghy for the last few weeks, ever Mm -hmm. since Rose and the Dagger, really. Yeah, I know I haven't seen you around town very much. I stay up nights, I write, and I think, and... Are you sleeping okay? I'm exhausted. It takes a lot to get me to sleep these days. Well, maybe you need to uh, change up your routine a little bit. You know, get out a little bit more, uh, get some fresh air. Maybe getting out would be good. Just, I wish I could get a lot farther than this. You know, sometimes you ever have that feeling like you wish a fresh start was possible? (laughs) Every day. So, about these feelings, what can I help you with, Mark? Well... I don't know how to handle them. I'm tired, I'm sad, I'm angry. Well, I think there's some support groups maybe in Austinville that you I, might... That's, that's not going to be an option. I see. Now, just, do you have anything that can help me sleep? Because the dreams, Doc, the dreams are getting to me. Dreams? God, oh, God, I had one last night. Pugsy. Uh-huh. Annika's dog. Yeah. I can't remember everything about this, but I remember his eyes. They were fire. And his voice sounded like his vocal cords were made out of sandpaper. Oh, boy. And he was trying to tell me there was something wrong in the woods outside of town. It's like, if it's outside of town, I'm, I'm going to be about as useless as a fish on a bicycle. Well, uh, having a bad dream about Pugsy, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, no, there's something about that dog that just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Have mm-hmm. you uh, considered a dream journal? You know, something right at your bedside so that you can just grab it first thing when you wake up. Keep track of the details. See if there are patterns mm. that are emerging to help you uncover what's what's going on with it. I can do that. Well, if we're not able to turn things around with changing up your routine a bit, there are some, some newer antidepressants we can recommend. But uh-huh. you know, as with all medications, they have a, a host of side effects. So Like, like what? So they could actually make the depression worse. Oh, um, they could make your sleep problems worse. Mm-hmm. It could lead to uh, impotence, possibly incontinence, bleeding gums, loose stools, excessive hair growth, uh, excessive hair loss. All at once. Again, this is uh, it's a newer medication, and it's maybe let's hold off. Father, it sure is good to have you back in town. Well, it's <laughs> nice to see you again, Annika. Oh, I haven't gosh. caught up with you for a long time now. Well, that's, that's true. I I have a little bit of a 
frustrating situation. Is this an okay time to talk well, to you? Well, absolutely. Oh. It's, uh, we've got time before Sheriff Jim calls it to order. Okay. Um, you know how much I, I enjoy my drawers? <laughs> well, yes, of course. Yeah. And and how I really appreciate fine drawer craftsmanship. Lately, everything that I'm doing to coerce my drawers into opening isn't working and you know no matter how much I threaten or beat or torture my uh, drawers they're not opening and I need what's in the drawers pretty badly so do you have any suggestions on how to open a drawer when everything doesn't work well I pull on it really hard that's what I do you know the drawer that wouldn't open I I, I even threatened to shoot the other drawers you know just cap them a good one and you know fill them full of holes and just but the it just was stubborn and stuck when I'm out target practicing I'll set up glass bottles and sometimes to relieve a little stress I'll shoot all the bottles but leave one and just think oh you saw what I did to your friends oh father it relieves some stress for me to do that Annika but sometimes you can use tools to try and get a drawer open if we're talking directly about physical drawers of course absolutely we're talking about physical drawers this almost sounds like a metaphor for something else that I could use in a oh. in a sermon someday <laughs> Not, no, not a metaphor at all. You know, sometimes old. I'll, I'll slip a, a knife inside, like a sharp steak knife or butcher knife, into the drawer. And like, little by little, like, pry on, twist that knife oh. and push it in and out and uh, and squiggle it around a little bit just hmm. to cause the drawer to wiggle and squirm until finally it'll come open for me. I've done that. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you so much, Father. Hello, everyone. Uh, please, please find your seats. Hi, Sheriff Jim here. Sheriff Jim here. I want to call this meeting to order. This is serious business we need to get through tonight. We don't have a lot of time because I need to get back on patrol. If you haven't heard, we have a bunny infestation. Bunnies? So as you can see from this map I put up, the red spots are where Flash has already urinated on their homes. The stench is overwhelming out there. If you smell it, you know good work's being done. The black spots is where I need help. We're going to trap and exterminate. I will take questions. Sheriff, I have to ask, why are we doing this about bunnies? They're sweet and fluffy and fuzzy and... Annika, there's a story out of the Midwest where they overtook an entire football field. They had to cancel the season because they built a tunnel system underneath the field and it collapsed. One construction worker sprained his ankle three months later putting in the new irrigation system. So it's not without victims, okay? Rabbits can pass around diseases like the plague. You ever heard of the plague? Plague? The plague? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also diseases like zoonosis. Zoonosis? Bumblefoot. Bumblefoot? Is that a real word? It's a little yeah. made up. Yeah, Folks, in my time in the TSA, we had a whole hour on bunnies and terrorism, okay? Terrorism and broken? That's what I'm trying to tell you. The threat level is that high. We're bunnies not joking around here. Well, let's keep our heads here. They are wild animals, and there's always a risk of spreading bacteria from animals to human. But as you do with any other animal, just wash your hands and try not to handle them very much. And control the population or overpopulation, right, Doc? What else could they do? Let me put this this as clear as I can, people. We are in a dangerous situation. These bunnies can be weaponized. (gasps) What? Weapons? Weaponized by our enemies, the Russians. All the people that want to hurt our way of life. They can load up Bumblefoot into the rabbit's feet and spread it that way. When you give Jimmy, when you give Jimmy for Christmas or his graduation from the Boy Scouts, his good luck charm, he's spreading bioterror. Have you ever had Bumblefoot? Well, I had it in the CIA back in 72. It ain't pleasant. So, I don't mean to go all Jim Jim on you, but this is no joke. Uh, no, no, I think we've heard enough. Um, So, we will trap and exterminate before they're weaponized and exterminate us. There is no room in the budget for bunny extermination. We had that big sewer leak last year and we had to fix all those pipes. I I don't have the money for this. There's a room in the budget for the town to be exterminated by bunnies. Uh, no. Well, what are your plans? I mean, what do you propose that we do? Shoot to- on sight. Well, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait. Lock and load. Jim, no. Jim, hold on. No. I want so many green and red lasers bouncing through this air. It looks like Christmas Eve. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, oh. Jim. I want to hear the crack of a 22 and a 30 odd six in the same breath. We are not turning the streets of Broken into a free fire zone because you had Bumblefoot. Twice. 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 Same foot. Twice? Oh. Foot models. 
don't recover from having bumble foot, okay? This is personal for me. What is the answer? You're telling me these they're terrorists and you have bumble foot? I still haven't heard a solution. They might as well be terrorists. They're bombs. They're ticking time bombs. I have read instances in Paranoid Weekly where entire towns needed to be leveled. This is not a joke. We are not leveling our town because of you saw two bunnies. It's not me. Well, Sheriff Jim. Oh, hello. You know that I trust your judgment and, and your experience on this, but wouldn't it be kinder to take the bunnies and figure out a way to relocate them to somewhere else? Yeah. I just am always looking for the kinder way to, yeah. to handle these things. I agree with the father that we need to relocate these bunnies. It sounds yeah. a lot cheaper. Father, I've, I've, I've always trusted your judgment. And to your point, I see the wisdom in not killing them. Well, thank you. But we still need to trap them. How are we supposed to trap these rabbits? We have a, an elaborate system. It's it a sounds nice, expensive. It's, it's a nice trap. It has mashed potatoes, a little bit of gravy. They come right in. They sit down. And here's here's one of the traps. Oh. Right? Okay. So as you can Whoa. see, it's very complicated and expensive. Yeah. Space but trap. it expensive? works. Expensive? $100 each. Each? And I got 100 of them. Yeah, we put on Brick's credit card. Can we talk about it at the next budget meeting? For God's sake, this is not the time to talk about it. Yes, and We're in a I will be situation calling here. the next meeting. Fine. So I've set up some teams. So over here in this corner, all you with the A that I gave you on the way in, please go to Alpha Team. All the Bs, meet with George over in the other corner. All the ones with the doctor symbol on your wrist, you're going to go be with Dr. Burgess. Shake it up out there. Let's go get them. We trap them. We all meet back at the dinghy. we I'll have a truck ready to get them into the pipeline to Austin builds. Okay? Are we all good? Rose, I'm going to need, if I didn't already say it, to commandeer your produce stand for bait. The produce stand? Everything you got out there is bait. After a week of bunny trapping, the residents of Broken are exhausted and wondering who poses the bigger threat to their existence, the bunnies or Sheriff Jim. They've gathered at the town's only bar, the Twisted Dinghy, to rest their feet and compare notes. Can we go around to the sector captains, please, check in? Honestly, Sheriff Jim, I'm pretty tired of the whole rabbit hunting experience. I think that we've been out for seven nights in a row now trying to trap these rabbits. And my God, personally, I think I got 200 of them myself. Anybody... Yeah, Joey, as captain of uh, Alpha One group, I can just tell you that if, when after we caught these rabbits and we put them in the boxes and they started reproducing at the rate of rabbits, they should show this to teenagers in high school. And mm-hmm. I tell you, none yeah. of them would be doing anything yeah. that they shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's, not, it's not a picture you're going to forget. Uh, Jim, yes, bro. I, I got an alert on my credit card here for $1,000 or more for rabbit cages. How did you organize that with my credit card? Well, you remember six months ago now, I ordered a bunch of pizzas. You let me use your credit card. I wrote it down. Did I? Yeah. You said I could use it in an emergency, so I've kept it for situations where a man with your credit line, it could be helpful to a mission. I really don't remember. Did the charge go through, though? Well, yeah. Hello? That's really all that's important. Look, Jim, I don't remember that. You know, Brick, I'm sorry, and I, I've heard you've been, you know, slipping a few gears now and again. Slipping? Heard you've been getting forgetful. Me? Ha! <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, okay. Then wow. those really? $100 rabbit traps did not do what they were no, promised. No, no, they did not. Maybe, maybe, could those have been mating traps? Oh, my God. What? Oh, oh my God. I'll have to check yeah. the paperwork. You, you took know, all my fruit and vegetables I think, from the I think the mattress and, and the little bottles of champagne was a dead giveaway. <laughs> well, you Nonetheless, know what? there is a rumor from Zebra Company down on the waterfront the bunnies are starting to gather. Yeah. We don't we don't know. It, it, it's a rumor. We, we'll get eyes on it here in a minute, but I need a couple more sectors to check well, in. I'm really, really pleased Annika had all those drawers because we would have had nowhere to put rabbits without them. Those traps were useless. Yeah. I want my money um, back. Can I get some help cleaning those drawers out, too? There's a lot lot of rabbit pellets and they're disgusting in my drawers. Well, I can tell you I've enjoyed hosting rabbits in the Chernogorsk. I've named all of them. There's Fluffy. There's actually three Fluffies because I couldn't tell the difference. Bunny Love. Carlos. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. I have great news. Carlos. I have great news. Team Tango met up with Team Salsa, which is led by my brother Manuel, and we managed to drive the bunnies down to the dock. I distracted Miss Julie using my masculine charms. And while she was distracted, the bunnies all got on the cruise ship. They all got on the Queen of the Gulls. They ran up 
Oh. They hippity hop down the bunny trail onto the boat. All of them, they're gone. No. You know? Yeah, that was but you know the funny thing is, I could have sworn that they flipped us the bird as they were sailing away. Yes. Wow. Now we can back to Okay, our I'm, I'm going to buy everybody a round of IPA oh. on Brick's credit card. Everybody in? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jim. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Broken Alaska, radio's only improvised ongoing drama series on Space 101.1 FM. Starring in this week's episode were Don Taylor as Sheriff Jim, Michael Crowley as Mark, Anthony Floyd as Doc Burgess, Carol Sparrow as Joey, Carrie Aguila as Rose, Paul Einhorn as Brick, Taylor Edwards as Annika, Julie Bragg as Heather, Kevin Trawick as Lars Larsonson, Craig Nelson as Father Francis, George Birch Wurtz as George, and Mike Fuller as Carlos and the announcer. It was written, directed, edited, and produced by Carrie Aguila and Mike Fuller. Music by Audionautics.com. We'd tell you what's coming up next time on Broken Alaska, but since it's improvised, you'll know as soon as we do.